Philadelphia is steep in broadcast history. From the early pioneering days of broadcasting in the 1920s to today, Philadelphia has always been at the forefront. The Delaware Valley has been home to some of the best local programming in the country, starting with the early soap operas and children's shows to pioneering the best news formats in the country, much of it all began right here. From radio announcers to television personalities, cameramen to directors, these were the broadcasters that burned up the airwaves. These were the pioneers of Philadelphia Broadcasting. This is the pioneers of Philadelphia Broadcasting, and we're recognizing, I don't know how it happened, but we're recognizing the 50th anniversary of Eyewitness News, which was a revolutionary thing that happened in Philadelphia. And one of the revolutionary things that happened in Philadelphia was my good friend Trudy Haynes. Hello, Trudy. Hello, good friend. I'm glad you said good friend, because you know, when I came here, I was scared stiff. I bet you were. I didn't know what was going to happen, how I was going to do it. I just knew that I put my foot in it, put my mouth open, and I had to go. Well, you were the first African-American woman I mean, that in itself Male. was something. Male and woman. Reported, because I was the first woman anchor person. You were the person. first woman, yeah. Um, and you came into, let's face it, a very hostile newsroom. Well, first of all, you pioneered that because there were no women around. None. Do you know who my uh, people were that I remembered? I couldn't uh, use them as icons because I never thought I would be on TV. But you remember uh, Sheila Graham. Yes. One of the first pioneers. She was really a pioneer for talk shows. And, and uh, Dickinson. Oh, Nancy, Nancy, Nancy Dickinson. Dickerson, who was part of my life. I started yes. at ABC, at doing a network show for ABC. I always said I started at the top and worked my way down. I <clears throat> started doing a new, a new show for ABC out of Washington. And Nancy was this beautiful well, young she, woman who was working maybe for CBS. And what's fascinating in terms of La Ronde is her son, John Dickerson, is now the chief political reporter uh, for CBS. And he's well, taken over mm -hmm. for Bob Schieffer. How nice, how yeah. nice. Well, see, you knew all of those people. I could only look at them and admire them and say, gee, women are finally getting their, their thing going yeah. on TV, never thinking that I would be one of them. So when that came about, I have to say that, uh, I won't say they inspired me, but I certainly looked up to them. How did you feel about Philadelphia first getting here? About the city first well, and then the station? I thought the city was magnificent and big, but see, I come from- You came from, from Detroit. I come, no, sweetheart, I come from Harlem, New York. <laughs> that's, 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 that's where I was born in Bellevue Hospital, which was a huge mental hospital. So, you know, <laughs> I had to take that into consideration. But no, uh, from New York to, I went to then to Detroit and then came here to Philadelphia right. because of Al Primo. Right. And he must have spotted me on the phone or something. Anyway, he called me in, in uh, Detroit. What were you doing in Detroit? I was doing um, the um, WXYZ. I was doing reporting and I started out there as a weather girl. That's what I thought I remembered. Yeah, I started as a weather girl there and I was just let, let turning let into for a yes. Look at how the world has changed. We used to call it the weather girl. <laughs> Nobody would do that no. today. You're now an astro, what something? Meteorologist. Meteorologist. Right. And of course, I didn't know anything about the weather. I, uh, all I knew about the <laughs> weather was if my toe hurt, my finger hurt, whatever hurt. But I was fortunate to uh, know a young man who insisted that I go out to the airport and, get, and learn some of the uh, terminology right. and took me to the library, but took me to the children's division so I could review geography Interesting. because we had to use a map. And I could remember what state was next to <clears> another state. <laughs> so that helped me a lot. And as I got into doing that, I started doing some interviews. And so it all started really for me at 1963 at WXYZ in, in Detroit. And then you came to Philadelphia in 65, wasn't in it? In 65, I came 66. here to, to And we had these <clears throat> little desks that were like carols <laughs> sitting, <laughs> sitting up there. And, and uh, when I saw you, I said, oh my goodness. And you, were, I think you were the only woman. I was on the on the uh, staff. I was for um, I for been, the news. I, I have been doing documentaries, 
and, and talk shows. And I had gone to the general manager of KYW and said, um, please, sir, I would like to do news. And he laughed. And he said, a woman will do news over my dead body. They're not authority figures, and they don't have good voices. Now, what year was that? That probably was somewhere between six, about 63. Six, so in that period of time. And then he left, and ah. then they decided to do a news show. And, um, and I ended up doing it. But um, I, I remember when you came in, I remember that the guys weren't very helpful. Oh, no. They, not I at mean, all. they were really pretty crummy. No, not at all. Uh, they, they, it's not to my face. It was all behind me, you know. Do the, you want me to tell you a secret were, of why additionally they weren't happy? I think they weren't happy because you were getting more money than they were. I didn't know that. Not much. I, you know, yeah. but 22 cents makes a difference in, okay. in to somebody's psyche. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Plus, we didn't discuss things like that, yeah. of course. And uh, to know that now, hallelujah. Well, and also <laughs> because they were asked, and they didn't do it, they were asked to help you. Mm -hmm. They said, she doesn't know the city. She doesn't. And they didn't. And I remember and I did. Because... I remember. Uh, but you know, Marsha Rose, all of that seems to be... Uh, something that most people go through when they go into a new situation. Right. I don't care what color you are, right. whether you're female or male, you always go into a strange situation apprehensive. And things can happen that aren't exactly the way you imagined or wanted them to happen. But the whole idea of my coming to the w, uh, KYW, I feel now as I look back that it was an experience, a welcoming experience, because I learned so much even though I had to push myself to do it. And I found, of course, uh, inside of me some strengths that I didn't know I always had. You had to have had terrific strengths because you went from being a reporter to, to being a survivor over the <laughs> yeah. years. Over the years with survivor because we had so many guys that come in that were CEOs that said, take this one out, take right. that one out. I can remember little secret corners that we would all talk, are you going to get the act, are you going to get the act? And everyone felt I certainly was going to get the act. So I have to give some kind of tribute to the union. That I protected you? That, yes. Well, do you remember a year when we had eight new news directors? In one year, I mean, yes, I remember. Was, and every one of them had wanted to do something with me. That's right. And finally, one of them just took me off news for a while. Did they? I don't remember. <coughs> I that. went upstairs to programming, and that's what uh, I appreciate it now, but I didn't like it then. But when I, <coughs> excuse me, when I went to programming, they gave me a whole two-hour show every Sunday. Two hours. See, I two don't remember two-hour hour show, show every Sunday. <laughs> they had to fill the it? time. And you had to get the guests. I started learning how to produce. That's fun. And directing. And getting hold of people to come on the show. It was an experience. Everything they did to me negative worked out positive. I remember also you did something that was called Trudy's Grapevine, was it? That was that was. That very was different. when they took me off the of news right. again. And they said, you can't do the hard news anymore, because I was doing uh, school board and right. education Sam issues. Evans and see, education stuff. No, 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 you can't do that anymore. So they put me on, you go out and do the shows. Mistake. <laughs> <laughs> but you loved I, it. I loved it and I made it live so much so that, uh, what was the guy's name that had the talk show downstairs in the basement? Mike Douglas. Mike Douglas threw me out of the room, threw me out of the groom, green room because I was doing stories that he was getting ready to do, but I was doing them before him. So he, they were waiting <laughs> to go on his show and you came in and said, I came in and grabbed them, <laughs> right, and put Very them on the clever. news that day. And they, so finally he said, keep that woman out of my green room. I, I, I remember at one point, <clears throat> it may have been that you were an endangered species and they had, um, a festival for you on the stage of the Academy of Music. Do you remember that? Jeez. I remember that. Really? But it was, I forget the name of the, I forget everything these mm -hmm. days, the young woman who put it together. She was not part of, of KYW. But we were all there singing your praises on the stage oh, thank of the you. Academy of Music. Oh, my you goodness. Sing, I remember something being there uh, when one of my anniversaries was coming up, right. but I didn't know it was 
in that vein. Well, that was what motivated it. Okay, I mean, and you know who, who you know who came to that? The one I remember, Frank Rizzo, the mayor at that time. Oh, how can we forget Frank Rizzo? <laughs> so, and did he come? Yes. I don't remember. Not that. only that, he sent me a large bowl, uh, the largest one that I yeah. have from the city. He uh, permitted me to do the first interview with his wife. Really, nobody ever did an interview with his wife. I did. Was that on your Sunday show? It was on my Sunday show, and I, I think I'm it, sure they didn't. I'm sure they had to use some of it on the news, whether they wanted to or not. I don't know. I don't remember. But I was the first one to do an interview with him, with her, Camille. Mm -hmm. Of all the things you've done, because you then went on and did other things aside from from KYW. Mm -hmm. What do you like the most, or what do you remember the most fondly? I can't. I have so many memories. It all yeah, I have so many memories. Uh, for instance, Beth Midler, I think, was in town recently, and I remember when I did her first interview. Uh, Joan Crawford was my first uh, celebrity, movie celebrity interview, <clears throat> and she was frightened to death because was it was she? her first live interview. And she was used to being Away prepared. from the theater, yeah, right. and she didn't have uh, cards, you know, reading cards or anything like that. And when she finished, uh, she sent me a note to uh, thank me nice. for relaxing her. Nice, nice. And um, that was why she was very nervous. And this great actress, you know, and I'm sitting there asking her some stupid questions. <laughs> How do you feel about this and that? So it was just wonderful. Well, it's tough. I mean, does somebody say to somebody who has had the kind of career you've had and, and, and the people you've met and the people you say, who is the best? Who is it? You can't think you can't, of it at that time. It's that. really no. a, not a really good I've had so many pleasure. wonderful experiences. Martin Luther King and Did you do Sam Martin Luther Evans. King? Tell me oh, about yes, that. Yes. Well, I really did that uh, when he came here to March right. in Philadelphia and I got an opportunity, but I had spoken to him when I was in Detroit. Oh. He came to Detroit to speak and I sat next to him. I have some pictures with him. They're treasured, and, I'm um, sure. You know, yeah, they're treasures. And like I said, Joan Crawford and so many, uh, Lyndon Johnson's Mrs. Johnson. I did her when she stepped off the plane with her, gar with, she was concerned about the gardens and flowers. America and more and beautiful. Yeah, exactly. Hubert Humphrey became a very good he friend. He was a friend of mine. Because he had a program to send um, African Americans around to different colleges to encourage them to get I didn't to know study. That. And I was on his panel, and so he was I've terrific. Had, yeah, I've had so many wonderful experiences. It's hard to say who was the best. I can remember a few of them I didn't like. Do you ever think of the, who was the worst? I mean, do you ever think of pe people you interviewed and you kept? Waiting? Yeah, I can think of them, but I wouldn't tell you. And you kept waiting for the time to be over, and looking at your watch and saying, "Oh." But I will tell you this: I was very, I was stood up by Sammy Davis a couple of times, Were even you really? though I ended up being very good friends with him and his wife. And, um, but I was stood up at the first times. I was stood up, I never did see Dizzy Gillespie. I waited for him for hours. Uh, so there was some, and when I finally got to do Cab Calloway. Right, boy, you did them all. <laughs> he said to me, uh, I, I, I was very jubilant, you know, I thought he was gonna come in with his Heidi, Heidi, Heidi Ho. And I said, what's the matter? He said, I only do that on the stage, lady. I get paid for that. Wow. <laughs> so that wow. interview kind of fell flat. But I did talk to him, Pearly. Remember Pearly May? Oh, I do. Yeah, Pearl Bailey. Oh, I, I've done so many of them. I, I just couldn't Have say. Have you thought about writing a book? Yes, and I'm going to tell you what happened. A young man here in Philadelphia said that he would do it for him, and he started, and he started peddling it around to see if if he could you right. know, sell it. And he came back and he said, "It's no point in finishing this book because you don't have enough dirt in it." <laughs> so. And I, I don't have But that. you don't want to. That's not what you did. I don't even did. know it. I was so busy trying to be, you know. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to be good and, and to hone in on my, my craft that I right. had, had established. And then to find out that you and I went to the same high school. That's right. Far I high. knew that I was in good company. <laughs> <laughs> well, Trudy, I think I'm always in good company when I'm with you. And I, I thank you so much for doing this. And it's fun to talk. Yeah. I'm sorry and, uh, we don't have enough time because I know there are a lot of memories that you remember that we were both involved in. I'm sure. Things that happened at the station with Tom Snyder and Vincent and oh, they were just wonderful but times. But can you believe it was 50 years? I mean, 50 years seems like 
yesterday. Yeah. Well, maybe the day before yesterday, but. Uh, but you still look wonderful, and you, thank you for all of the things that you've been doing in in this in yeah. this state. Thank you, Trudy, and thank yeah. you for being here. It's it's been a delight. Thank you.